think there's a lot of confusion out there, even among older people or more mature people in terms of some of the gender roles and what women really want and expect from men. Yeah. Um, in speaking with men over the last few years, as I've interviewed a fair amount of men, I know there's some genuine confusion among some men about what women really want and expect from them. And so I think this, you know, it's a, it's a broader crisis Certainly, there's a boy crisis that you speak to in your book, but it's a broader crisis in the world. It's big time. But you, you just said something really, really appropriate to the goal of this conversation, which is uh, for many people listening, single women wanting to understand men better. Don't ask men so many questions like you would do a girlfriend. Mm. Don't let him talk more than you. Don't let him talk. You'll see that. If you're still single, you ask too many questions. And mm. just let him clam up, uh, uh, you know, ask a few questions, make sure that if you ask him, a, if there's nothing happening, you can always ask a question, get a short answer. As soon as he gives any answer, immediately say something like, well, that's a good idea, that makes sense, or really, that's so interesting, and then start talking. That, you know, that's called priming the pump. Sometimes you can't. <laughs> You can't get the water up there. You stick a little water in. Get them to talk a little bit, then change the subject back to you. The problem is women want to have the connection. There's two ways to connect. One is to go into him or he goes into you. Your job, women, is to get him to come into you. That's called attract him in, bring him in, open up, let him see you, let him come into you. That's where he will bond. If you go into him, he will not bond with you and you will not be satisfied with him. Mm. And, and then it goes also another thing it does besides dissatisfaction, it's also going to and activating this uh, bias towards negativity. Uh, it will also put him in the friend zone where you just can't feel any physical attraction to him. And I mentioned before that sometimes the right man for you is going to feel like the friend zone. So don't do anything to encourage the friend zone. Uh, basically, this is the guy who's more interested in you than you're interested in him. He's your gold mine. He's to retrain your brain that you are safe in the presence of a man. You don't have to seek to please him. You let him please you. And you can practice how to ask for help. You can practice giving him three things. This is what I'd like you to You pick. Here's three things I'd like to do. You pick. Practice not trying to change him in any way. Practice not having sex right away unless you just can't stand it and you want to have it. But it should be not to change him. It should be for you. See, many women feel so burnt because they had sex with a guy and he doesn't call back. And I go, why does it hurt? Well, you know, he didn't call back. I said, so you were expecting more from him. You see, mm -hmm. if you have sex, is you're basically saying, okay, if we have sex, take this back a few years. If you have sex, you have to marry me. <laughs> I mean, this is still some deep conditioning inside, you know? It's like, <laughs> what? We had sex, you owe me, you know? If you have sex with men, it shouldn't be a man owes you anything. It should be you are having sex because he's already given you everything that you want to open yourself up. That's when sex is great. And he will enjoy sex more if it's not, if it's not like um, you're doing it for him. Sex should be for you. If sex is for you, it's because you needed it and you like it and you love it, and then he will love you more. So that's the wisdom of waiting. But today... With so much pressure, you know, uh, and particularly if you're dating the right guy for you, if you have this pattern of dating the wrong men, then if it's the right guy, you're not going to really feel that warmth yet. Uh, so, and he's going to probably be too shy <laughs> to put the moves on. But if he does make the moves, it, there's so much pressure on men to like have sex right away in a relationship. Then you, you basically, if you're kissing and making out, you just say, oh, this feels so good. And he says, yeah. And he wants to go further. You say, oh, I like to go really slow. And he'll feel like, what? You know, it's like a failure to him. Then you, you support him at that moment. You say, oh, I would love to have sex with you. It's just I need to go slow. I can't wait. Then his <laughs> ego is satisfied, you know, and it is an ego thing and they all have it. And uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, to have sex and the sooner you have sex for many, many men uh, is a sign of uh, he's Superman kind of a thing. It's a testosterone booster. But also the same testosterone booster is, I like to go slow, but I really can't wait till we do that. That's exciting to me. I want to do that. So, and then you don't have to do it later. You can change your mind, you know, but, but right. do something so you just, just knock down his ego with rejection. And uh, 
And typically that guy who's pursuing you, uh, who's available to you, he might be, and if you're a very independent woman, he's going to be maybe, uh, in some cases, quite commonly, he is sort of a shy, sensitive type, uh, more on his female side, so to speak. When men are more on their female side, they're more connected with their emotions, and so they're going to feel more intimidated. They're in touch with fears. The guys here have no intimidation at all. They're on their male side. You know, they don't have any emotions. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'll just go do this and do this. You know, and that you toughen up. That's all masculine energy. And what you want, typically, if you're an independent woman, you want a man who's going to be uh, on both sides, okay, to a certain extent. Uh, and they're, they're the ones who are trainable. You, you know, one level, I remember when Oprah just started out, out of this vision came to me, I remember, I've done a lot of Oprah shows, but I remember when she just started out, maybe a year into her show, she was standing there and talking about uh, what do women want, you know, and, and, and she got all excited when, she, when somebody said, yeah, we want a real man. We want, and Oprah goes, yeah, a real man, a real man. And it's kind of like, well, what is that real man? And then she says, yeah, he'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, what real men took Oprah? <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, there's a, you know, you don't have to have somebody be so powerful. They sweep you off your feet. If you're already a powerful woman, you need to bring yourself to your vulnerable part, which depends on someone. And generally, the more powerful man is... Uh, I won't say this. It, it just, I just typically there's going to be more attraction between somebody who's in their female, a man on his female side needing to go to his male side is a good fit for a woman who's on her male side needing to go to her female side. For the guy who's really on his male side, he needs to have a woman who's really on her female side. Okay. And so they'll come together. Uh, and, and because he's there, she'll feel safe and her male side will come forth as she appreciates him more. As he takes care of her, his heart softens because she's so vulnerable and dependent on him. He becomes a better person. So always there needs to be this sort of complementarity. You have to be compliments in some way for there to be an attraction. Some gain has to be there. So if you're a woman and you're on your male side, you're, you need to come back to your female side, but you want to keep your male side. You don't want to push that away. That's a beautiful part of you. And so you're going to find a guy who's on his female side who needs to come over to his male side and you just train him. He's the easiest one to train and he'll be the safety place for you to ask for help, to express how you feel, to make mistakes. You can make all the mistakes in the world. You get a guy who's way on his male side and you make mistakes, they tend to get angry. Mm. Uh, but the, the sensitive guys also can get angry too. That's the problem for all men today is that we have a culture that's embraced anger as some sort of therapeutic benefit. Uh, a real man is taught, you know, when I teach men how to be men, you never ever talk if you're angry, particularly if a woman's there. You're cool, calm, and collected, and if you are angry, you take a time out. And so I'm saying now to the women who are dating, if your man is angry about something, don't ask questions. Don't get him to talk more. Uh, not a good thing. Just, you know, take your timeouts, take your timeouts, change the subject, don't pursue something. U ultimately, here's your fail safe. Okay, now this is a manipulation that's as old as women <laughs> and men coming together. <laughs> it's the oldest manipulation, which sometimes you have to use a manipulation at the, at the nth degree, which is, and actually it's, it's really being authentic too. And that's, you're right, I'm wrong. You say that to a man, you'll calm him down.